it's Melissa. In this video, I am going to give you a couple of tips and tricks on engraving silicone. So I have these silicone spoons here. They're just a pack of baby spoons off Amazon, which I will link to in the description below. Um, and I want to show you my method for how I uh, perfect not only my cuttings, but also how I engrave silicones. We will start with the basics of engraving silicone and then I'll get into my tips and tricks on how exactly I refine those settings. You are never going to believe how easy this is. Okay, so here we are in Xtool Creative Space 2. I am using, uh, to for this project, I am going to use my Xtool P2, which is already connected. We are all set here. So this is a live view um, of my uh, laser. So what you can see, I am actually going to laser engrave spoons in this example, but the um, process is pretty much the same depending on what you are going to, what type of silicone or rubber you are going to engrave. So first thing is I'm going to put a name on a spoon. So I'm just going to use this text tool up here. And when you open the text tool, you will just get this hello box. And in Xtool Creative Space 2, you can just type in the new word. Okay, so I am going to just type in um, a name and we are going to use that on our spoon. So I'm not gonna size it quite yet and I'll get to that in a second. Fruitcake, yes. Okay, so this, I like this font because it's it's kind of kid friendly but yet still bold at the same time. It doesn't have a lot of really small areas like um, it's not a serif font so it doesn't have those little extra um, verticals or horizontals. This one is from um, So Fonsi. I just have it downloaded on my computer. I was actually able to bulk download all of the fonts in that bundle, which there's like 110 of them. I will link to that in the description below. Also, if you click the little shop button under um, this video, you'll be able to go directly to that. And this one is included in those like 110 fonts. Okay, so here is my font. Now I am not going to score. I'm actually going to engrave, which is going to um, give when I'm engraving silicone, I like to engrave because the score line sometimes just gets lost in the material itself. So I'm going to engrave and then I'm going to adjust my settings. Now, the key here is that you want to prevent the silicone from burning. So if the silicone itself burns, what happens is you get this black soot and then your silicone itself is going to be basically stained black and we don't want that. So what I like to do is put it at about a 60 power. Okay, so what I like to do is put it at about a 45 power, 40 power. You can actually just type these numbers in if you want. And then the speed is 150. I like to use a speed of 150. Now what this does is it's a lower percent power and the speed is pretty moderate and it's not, so it's not going to sit um, on the area too long. And that's what we want to prevent because we don't want it burning. And then you can change it from one or two passes. I tried two passes and I didn't like, like it because the second pass it ended up actually creating the burn. And then this, the lines, I am going to scale down to about 70. Okay, so we've got this set here at 40% power, 150 millimeters per second, one pass, and the lines are going to be 70. Okay, next thing I need to do is actually put my spoon into my laser. Now, you can probably see here, I have these two, the two um, bars here are very close together. That's so that my spoon can sit evenly. So let me go put my spoon in the laser and I'll be right back and we will refresh the view. Okay, the spoon is in there. I am going to, um, with the text not selected, I have the option here to snapshot review. So I'm gonna refresh that and my spoon is going to appear. Now, the reason that I really like the Xtool P2 um, and now also the P2S is because you get this top-down view of the um, object in here. So some of the other Xtools have um, a camera, but they are maybe, maybe mounted at the top or the bottom and you get this like fisheye and it's you don't end up getting a very accurate um, view of where you are going to place your um, item. But with the Xtool P2, you do. And so it's actually really um, helpful for placement, especially on small objects like this is. Okay, so now I can just place my item there and I can size as I want. So I'm going to size it down a little bit because I would like to add a shape. So in this case, I'm going to add a little heart. So I'll just add a heart here. This is one of the standard Xtool shapes that they have in Creative Space and I'm gonna scale that down as well. I'm also going to change that to engrave, and what you're gonna notice is that this, the 
settings are not the same, so I need to make sure that I adjust those. So I'll put that back to 40, uh, 150, and 70 here. And then I'm just gonna move this down here. I'll rotate it a bit. You can, I, I wanna size this down a little bit. Okay, Where, whatever you wanna do, okay? Um, this is just a baby spoon. Okay, so before I do anything else, I need to measure. So the thickness, the silicone spoons are actually pretty thick and the thickness is different on this part of the handle than it is say down here by this like little, what I'll call neck part, okay? It's just a thicker material. And when you see the spoon itself, you'll understand what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna use this, um, I, uh, this little tool here that is going to basically give me the camera view and I'm gonna tell it, this is exactly where I want you to measure, okay? So it's measuring right now and what's happening is um, the camera itself is going to that area and that's where it's going to measure, okay? And now it's telling me that it's ready to go. So at this point, I can just confirm my settings. Everything is set correctly. We are engraving and I can do one last thing. So if I wanna make sure, I know I like these settings. If I wanna make sure that I keep them, I can click save settings and do silicone spoon, okay? Because silicone, the material itself is going to be the same, but let's say you are also going to engrave a silicone bib and it's not quite as thick or the material, and I will tell you that it is, it's not as like stiff or rigid. So you might need to start with these settings, but adjust a little bit, even though it's both silicone, if that makes sense. Okay, so I'm gonna click save. Once I do that, it will be up here. I already have a bunch of, um, items up here, which is why it's there, but that's where it will show. Okay, I don't know why you are limited, but you are. Okay, now I'm gonna click go to process. This is going to show me the path of the processing. So if I wanted to adjust that, I would have to go back or I could do it down here and adjust it, but I'm leaving this as it is. It's also telling me the estimated time is gonna take about 48 seconds, which is not bad at all. And I'm gonna click start. This, when I click start, it's not actually going to start it's going to tell me that I need to go to my machine and then press the start button over there. Okay, so you can see I have my spoon in there. It, my machine is already closed up. I wanna make sure that I don't move anything. And I'm gonna go over and just press the start button and it will begin. Now, I am going to get a little bit of this white residue. It's really just the basically the dust of the silicone that is being removed during the process. But what you are seeing is that there's almost no flame at all, okay? I do have, um, the X-Tool P2 has built-in air assist, and I do have the new filter, which I absolutely love. I have a separate video on that as well. It works really well. It keeps a lot of the dust and um, it just filters the air really well. Okay, so this is done. I'm going to open it up and you're gonna see that we have basically white, okay? Now we just need to clean this up. So I'm gonna take it to my table and I'm going to use alcohol to clean this. So you don't wanna use a dirty cute tip to clean because it'll just add more debris. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get a clean Q-tip and I'm going to clean. Now, I like to go over it twice, okay? So this first time I just get everything off of there. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do I'm not going to use this side again. I'm going to flip it to this clean side and I'm just going to clean it one more time. Okay. And you can see now some colors of the spoons silicone come out better than others. It depends, I shouldn't say better, in person, in like when you see it, you know, in front of you, it's very obvious to see. I don't know how well it's coming across the video. What you are uh, trying to avoid is this. This, while it's a deeper engraving, you've got like brown and white, and that is 
the burn marks, okay? So you're looking for something that is going to basically give you the same color engraving as the actual silicone itself. Okay, so here is the trick. How do you avoid basically testing on all of your blanks, right? So you, you are just going to take one and then you are going to use the settings that you know, you recommend or you did a grid and if you're not sure how to do a grid, I have a separate video on that. But once you get the first one done, then what you're going to do is you need to refine the settings before you do the rest of them. The rest of them are gonna come out perfect. This one is your tester and I have plenty of testers. I have tumblers that are testers. I Everything, everything I do, I don't just magically know the number, okay, or the settings. So once you get your tester, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a couple of pictures of it and then I use AI to ask it, what do I need to adjust in order to make it perfect? Here is the problem. It's creating a flame. It's got too many lines. It has, uh, it's sooty. It's not deep enough. It's too deep. What do I need to adjust? And it will tell you. And ultimately, what I came back to and what I found to be the perfect settings, as I showed you in this one, was the 40 power, 150 uh, millimeters per second was not quite enough. I actually bumped it up to 200 and then I found that mine had a little bit too many like of those lines. I don't like those laser lines and they really come across when you're using silicone. So I bumped that up as well on the recommendation of Claude. I love Claude. Uh, ChatGPT I use as well, but Claude is perfect for this type of thing because you can pull pictures in and I just love it. And that is my secret weapon when I am adjusting settings. I'm not just like randomly like, oh, the power goes up, the speed goes down, the this, the that. No. Mm -mm -mm. Let it tell you what to do and take those suggestions. And then, my friends, you don't take a new spoon and do it. You take the same spoon and you're going to do it again until you find those perfect settings and then you're going to save them as I showed you how to save and then you are going to apply them to the rest. All right, guys, all of the links uh, for everything from the spoons to the laser itself to this um, uh, filter that I love uh, to the font bundle, everything is in the description below. See you later.